Oh yes, it was smelling like teen spirit when the Winter X Games set up shop in the French Alps, giving way to inevitable three-way super pipe showdown between Vito, iPod, and the seemingly unstoppable Mr. Sean White. Always those guys. Mm -hmm. An all-out Brazilian invasion led the action at the men's Burton Toyota Pro at Surf Fest in Australia as William Cardoso battled fellow countryman Felipe Toledo. And a crash in AMA Supercross once again changes the course of the race at Indy. And we've got all the latest inside news. It all starts right now. You're inside Ally Sports. Rockstar, top to bottom. Sean White delivers for this crowd. Have we seen in that corner? Rochambeau, fuck. Hey, you didn't read the rules. I did. Oh. You did? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to Inside Ally Sports. If you like what you see, and quite frankly, why wouldn't you? Uh, please subscribe. <laughs> Trust me, you'll thank me later. And more importantly, like us, because we like to be liked. Uh, it's we a love do. thing. We do. And Pat Parnell here. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm Angela's son. Pro snowboarders and free skiers from all corners of the globe gathered at the Winter X Games teams in France in one of the most competitive lineups of the season. In his very first appearance at teens for Winter X, rumors were flying that White was going to take it up even higher and attempt a new trick, the double alley rodeo. The fan anticipation was off the charts, and White had no trouble setting the bar as high as his air with a run that was his competitor's worst fear. He started out with a huge backside air. This is his debut here at the Winter X Games team. Back to back double cork 1080s. Pay attention, they have to flap off, pay attention, they have to fly up on the crowd. Front side inverted 540. This is why judges hand out. Double McTwist 1260 and finished with an alley oop rodeo on his last hit. Alley oop rodeo, that trick is. Sean didn't attempt his new trick, but clearly it didn't affect his score, nailing a near-perfect 98. It wasn't 100? What's up with yeah. that? Challenger Louis Vito had one last chance on his third run to unseat the king of Superpipe, and he came close with four consecutive double courts. Like this. Oh, and that was a beautiful run there for Louis Vito. Which got the fans fired up, but fell short when it came to the judges. And the pressure was definitely felt by Swiss rider Yuri Polajikov, who scored an 88 on his first run. When Sean White passed on trying his new trick, iPod went all in and attempted a new trick of his own, a switch double McTwist 1260. Wowzers. Unfortunately, the wrist didn't find its reward, and he crashed setting up for it, ending his third and final run. But the 88 on his first run was enough to put Kolachikov on the podium in third, with Louis Vito topping iPod with a 94.33 for the silver. And no surprise to anybody, Sean White walking away again with X Games gold. After setting on the second place podium at the Burton US Open for the first time in, well, at this point no one can really remember, yeah. Kelly stepped foot on the snow at teens, determined to reclaim her title as the Sean White of women's snowboarding. Or maybe Sean's the Kelly Clark of men's snowboarding. I kind of like that one better. Okay. Yeah, it's all starting to get really confusing. <laughs> but Kelly wasn't without competition. Caitlin Farrington threw three 900s to challenge Clark. That was answered by Elena Height, who beat Clark for the top spot at the Burton US Open. Height hit a smooth, solid run, moving her to second place past Farrington. But at the end of the day, the pipe once again belonged to Kelly Clark. Her second run started with the frontside 720, then cap 720. Huge frontside 900. Huge frontside 900. Backside 540. And a huge frontside 1080 on the last wall. Final results had Clark taking X Games gold with a 95, a full 10 points ahead of second place finisher Height, followed by Farrington in third place. But the name Sean White didn't stop at the Superpipe, oh no, uh, as the Olympic gold medalist found his way to the slope style course. And Sean asked himself an obvious question, why dominate one event when you can dominate two? Well thought out. Uh, just like Superpipe, White set the bar ridiculously high on his first run, playing it fairly safe on the rails, but combining his big tricks with nearly flawless landing. He comes up with tricks and then effortlessly puts it to his feet. 
Canadian Mark McMorris attempted to get in the neighborhood of White's score with a 90 but fell on his last two runs. 2010 Winter X Games Teams gold medalist Eric Letts struggled through his first two runs. His 88 point score on run three netted him the third place spot on the podium with McMorris snagging the silver and Sean White setting yet another record as the only Winter X Teams athlete to win two golds at the event. In women's slope style, defending X Games teens gold medalist Jamie Anderson made it look easy and once again took home the gold medal. She was followed by Canadian Spencer O'Brien in second on the podium and Finnish rider Eni Rukiyarvi in third. Men's ski slope style was one of the tightest competitions in Winter X history, with the top podium finishers all scoring in the 90s and separated by only a three-point difference. Defending X Games gold medalist Tom Wallace was unable to repeat his win as Bobby Brown beat his own first run score with a phenomenal 95-point second run that set the crowd on fire. Final results had Norway's Andreas Hotvit taking third, with Tom Wallace settling for silver, and fellow American Bobby Brown with X Games gold. For women's ski slope style, Canada's Kaya Turski set the record with her third consecutive Winter X Games teams gold medal. She did the same thing at X Games Aspen, making Turski the first X Games athlete with a double three-peat at two X Games events. Australia's Anna Segal took second, with Dara Howell from Canada earning the bronze. For a complete list of results, check out xgames.com. Sean White's name is now being uttered in the same breath as superstar athletes like Michael Jordan. How does he dominate and how long will he stay uncontested at the top? When I have important questions like these on almost any subject, I go straight to our expert snowboard analyst and one of my uh, favorite life coaches, Todd Richards. So let's talk about Sean White's competitive year. But let's start back last summer when he was competing skateboarding at Detour. Sean came in and did really, really well. Here's the armadillo. Oh! Oh! Wow, Sean White. Once he gets on a skateboard, he's unstoppable if he lands his run. Fast forward now to December. Sean had been working on skating, maybe working on some other projects. He's got a lot of business ventures happening. He comes to Breckenridge. He gets to the event maybe a day before the halfpipe starts. Has one day of practice. Goes home with the halfpipe easily. <laughs> then we see another break for Sean White. Doesn't show up again until X Games. Gets hurt in slopestyle practice. Pops out of slopestyle. Comes back the next night. Destroys everyone in the halfpipe. A perfect 100. The first time ever. Then Sean disappears again. Then he pops back up at the US Open of snowboarding. Drops in, cruise control, minimal practice, wins the contest on his first run dropping into the pipe that day. One week later, he shows up at European X Games and suddenly has a whole bunch of new tricks in slope style and wins the half pipe on cruise control. Rockstar, top to bottom, Sean White delivers for this crowd. Sean basically showed up and blowed up at every single event that he came to this year. Sean White about to drop in. A perfect 100. Sean White, the man, the myth, the legend. Sean White is in the driver's seat, and he's basically got room for no others in the car. He dominated, and I didn't really see this slowing down. You cannot argue the fact that Sean White is the best half-pipe snowboarder on the face of the earth. Hands down, that ever lived. Thanks, Todd. The winners of the Real Snow Backcountry Competition were also announced at the Winter X Games. Nicholas Mueller was awarded gold by the judges, followed by Gigi Ruff in second and Yusi Oksanen in third. But don't feel bad for third place Oksanen because he came out on top in the fan favorite competition. Coming up, Brazil takes over Australia. Well, at least on the beaches of Newcastle at the Men's Burton Toyota Pro. Oh yeah, mate. And it was Sally versus Malia at Surf Fest in the finals of the Hunter Ports Women's Classic when we come back. Don't laugh at me. No, I didn't don't sound Australian me. whatsoever. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know anything that even comes close to this contest. The Red Bull Signature Series continues with Cold Rush, March 24th on NBC. 
Welcome back to Inside Ally Sports. Many of the top men's and women's pro surfers travel to Newcastle, Australia for Surf Fest, a six-star ASP event. And on the men's side, at the Burton Toyota Pro, surfers on Meriwether Beach felt the heat from South America as the always progressive pack of Brazilians came out in force. The highest place Australians Chris Friend and Mitch Cruz were eliminated in quarterfinals. That left American Gabe Kling, the only non-Brazilian in the semis, going up against Felipe Toledo, who posted the event's only perfect 10. Oh, massive backside aerial oh, to reverse. Wow. Wow. In the finals, Toledo took on fellow countryman William Cardoso in a heat that had as much action as it did controversy. What is happening out there, Jess? Toledo was penalized with a priority interference call after dropping in on Cardoso. But going into the final minutes, Toledo still held the lead thanks to a monster air reverse. But Cardoso fought back and his power gouges saw him move past Toledo and claim the coveted Mark Richards Trophy. Give him a big round of applause, William Cardoso, 2012 Burton Toyota Pro Champion from Brazil. The power struggle was just as intense at the Hunter Ports Women's Classic. ASP World Champion Carissa Moore suffered another setback and was eliminated in the quarterfinals when she went up against fellow Hawaiian Malia Manuel. ASP Women's runner-up Sally Fitzgibbons defeated American Courtney Conlog in the semis while Malia moved past Sage Erickson, setting the stage for the final. But Manuel seemed to be outmatched by the Australian, who continually executed perfectly timed snaps and smooth carves to emerge as the Hunter Ports Women's Classic winner. Put your hands together for Sally Fitzgibbons. It's great to have you know a lot of the World Tour competitors here supporting this event and and um, you know having Hunter Ports you make it a six star it allows it all, all to come and uh, enjoy the special week. Currently underway is one of the most prestigious events on the Australian leg of the ASP Tour, the Telstra Drugware Pro at Margaret River in Western Australia. A prime contest for the men and a six star for the women. Local fans are looking forward to the return of 11-time world champion Kelly Slater. He's joined by Quicksilver Pro winner and current number one Taj Burrow and 2010 Margaret River champion Josh Kerr. On the women's side, Laura Ennevert, Lakey Peterson and Malia Manuel are there to take on some of the world's top surfers. I'll be watching and I'll also be watching the men and who better to break down the hope and hype of the 2012 World Tour than Mike Sniff's Parson himself, the ultimate authority on competition surfing. I think the mid-year rotation, I think it's good that they've gone back to not having it for a couple of reasons, but the number one reason is that the venues change so much throughout the year. And I think the types of waves, you break it down, you have the beach breaks, you have the reefs in the South Pacific. We have point breaks. So to give a surfer only, say, six events to show their stuff coming into it as a rookie is incredibly hard. So I think having the full 12 months is the fair, right thing to do. From a fan's perspective, obviously the mid-year cutoff was fantastic because you saw the excitement of someone like Gabriel Medina coming in, qualifying and winning two events. I'll tell you what, this, this kid's got some fight in him. You saw uh, Gabriel steal that way from underneath Taylor. Unprecedented performance from a 17-year-old in surfing history. We're talking about rewriting the books and Gabriel, he's just starting his first chapter. There's just an incredible breed of talent worldwide now and they're all pushing each other and they're going, hey, I want that to be me. And they're going and chasing these prime events sooner. The best young kids want to be on the world tour. If you get on that tour, it really truly is something special. You've really achieved something, especially nowadays. You want the best guys to get on the tour quicker. The last six months, one surfer made it. They have addressed that with some of the points issues. They've raised the points in some of the primes. They've changed a couple of the formats. So they are working in the right direction to make sure more talent, more changeover happens at the end of each year. He's going to be around for a long time. You're looking at the young phenom from Brazil. You got to remember that the Kaloes and the Medinas and Miguel Pupos, they're the less than half a percent. I mean, those guys are ridiculously good. And they'll make it on any system you give them because they're so good. But their ultimate goal is to have the very best surfers on the tour. So it's a delicate balance. Coming up, one rider wins big while another goes down and stays down as AMA Supercross rolled into Indianapolis. We preview the skate action at the Tampa Pro and get you caught up on all the latest inside news. Stick around.
Welcome back to Inside LA Sports. Here's the breakdown of the latest in sports with Inside News. While half the country feels the frustration from their Final Four brackets, the rest of us are following the brackets in the underground skateboarding competition Battle at the Barracks. Recently, it was Nyjah Houston versus Kevin Romar, each pulling out their best tricks to stay in the game, but with Nyjah coming out on top. Also mixing it up on the other side of the bracket, Paul Rodriguez went head-to-head -head with Davis Torgerson. Oh. But at the end of the day, it was P-Rod skating away with the win. P-Rod! No huge prize purse, just the prestige of being part of one of the purest skateboard contests around. That's what draws the world's best skaters to the 19th edition of the Tampa Pro in Florida. One of the only contests to retain its initial grassroots vibe, it features a course redesigned each year, which continues to evolve with help from Nike SB. Look for top skaters like three-time winner Greg Lutzka, the pro contest debut of Luan Oliveira, and favorites like Nigel Houston, Ryan Desenzo, and three-time X Games gold medalist Paul Rodriguez. 11-time X Games gold medalist Travis Pastrana make his return to the NASCAR circuit at the season opener of the K&N Pro Series at Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Pastrana's original NASCAR plans were knocked off course last summer during X Games 17 when his crash in the Moto X Best Trick competition resulted in severe fractures in his right ankle and foot. Pastrana has been training with coach Matt Crafton and says he's healthy and ready for the track. After the mud-soaked mayhem at the last AMA stop in Daytona, crowds were more than happy to pack themselves inside Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis for the 11th stop on the AMA Supercross Tour. Nearly 60,000 fired up fans were on hand to see if Bubba Stewart could repeat his Daytona win. But in the first qualifying heat, it didn't take long for Stewart to end up in a more familiar position this season, face down in the dirt, with Kevin Windham landing right on top of him. Okay, now watch Stewart here. He does a signal. Watch the rear wheel lose traction. And then he comes up short on that jump. Windham jumps right into him. Watch this on board. Oh, man. The day Stewart had to be taken off the field and was later diagnosed with a concussion. In the second heat, it was Villapoto's turn who experienced Daytona deja vu going down right after the start. Oh, Villapoto has issues. Villapoto remounting quickly and holds on to second place. But he quickly jumped back on his bike, miraculously holding on to the number two slot and advancing. In the main event, after a slow start, Villapoto methodically worked his way through the pack, eventually passing leader Justin Brayton. Here we go. There it is, right there. To hold on to the lead all the way to the finish. Ryan Villapoto's done it again in 2012. Just like tonight, it could, you know, I could be like James, you know, and end up crashing. So I got to stay focused. Following Brayton to the third podium spot was Davey Millsaps. Overall standings reveal no surprises, with Ryan Villapoto looking quite comfortable with a 54-point lead, followed by Ryan Dungey and James Bubba Stewart in third. Bubba tweeted to his fans after the accident. I'm very sore and will get checked out when I get back to Florida. Bum for my team and fans, still trying to put what happened last night together. The riders pack up their bikes and head for the Great White North for stop number 12 at the Rogers Center in Toronto, Canada. Thanks for checking us out again on Inside LA Sports, your base camp for action sports. And keep up with the latest news and events by following us on Twitter at LA Sports or give us your take by tweeting at hashtag Inside LA Sports. And should I remind him to like us, how, how important it is that we're liked? Yeah. He likes to be liked. Okay, make sure you subscribe to Ally Sports Network and check out all the shows on the Ally Sports channel here on YouTube, but especially this one. I'm Pat Parnell. I'm Angela Sun for Inside Ally Sports. So there's a swell this weekend. Would it be oh, creepy yeah, if I right. asked you to go tandem? No? Kind of creepy. Sam George style? <laughs> Weird. <laughs>